This video was sponsored by my supporters. For more exclusives like this or just to support this channel, check out the links down below. In 2022, the world will see Star Citizen continue into its 11th year of development. We've watched the rise and fall of Behemoth Games, the entire restructuring of some companies, and a few massive shifts in the video game industry in that time. Some people believe it has been far too long, and at this point, the project will never amount to a functional game. Yet thousands of new players are joining every week, and many more are playing regularly. So what's the deal? Why do people keep trying to play this game? Thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. Before we start, I want to be very clear about this opinion video. This isn't meant to convince or prove to anyone that the project is perfect, it's got problems and it's flawed. I talk about all this at length in my podcast, live streams, and videos. This video is meant to help people understand why a game in such a predicament still manages to capture the attention of so many for so long. So let's get into it. With 10 years of building studios, hiring employees, working on the game engine, and maintaining some form of a playable environment, the studio behind Star Citizen, CIG, finds itself in a position unlike any other game company. Earlier on, development felt slow and aimless due to most of the efforts going into developing the game engine and structuring the company. There were so many features needing to be solved and realistic progress on those features was faltering. Basics like purchasing ships, sending money to friends, and using a personal inventory weren't even possible up until the last few years. And only in the last year or so has the development seemingly turned towards a more player-facing, cohesive experience, with updates consistently now including locations, missions, activities, new features, and quality of life changes. Despite all this time treading water, the game maintained a very strong community that played through all the frustration in the name of a unique experience. Early backers are the reason the game ever reached where it is now. They were happy to support the game and were content for the time being with the basic tech demo of an experience we had for some time. Or they just enjoyed abuse. The fact of the matter was that the experience was unique but terribly frustrating with low frame rates, glitches, and crashes of both the client and the server. Now, I don't want to spend time getting into what is deserved and what is not. Even now, the game is still not ready for most players, and back then it was even more true. But Star Citizen has always had unique gameplay to offer to those with enough patience. And despite this bad reputation, the players who stuck around learned to appreciate the small additions that were being made at the time. And as the community grew and more players joined, the game's accelerating forward progress over the last three to four years meant every player that joined would also see improvements in different parts of the game, reinforcing this idea that the game was indeed progressing. This wasn't true for all who tried the game, but many could see a game developing that they eventually would want to be part of. When the game's development seemingly took a turn in mid-2021, the features and additions started to grow in significance to the average player. The first star system's planets and moons were initially completed. A new medical system finally allowed for a full combat team to go into battle with some support. The inventory system was introduced to allow item management across ships, stations, and cities. A loot system made adventuring out to do those missions more interesting. Crashed spaceships, offered new areas to explore and fight, and more continued to be done to make the game more interesting and fun, up front, for the casual player. This had never really been the dominant focus for Star Citizen, but now that it is, there's been a tangible impact on player retention, in my opinion. In addition, the studio has gotten much better at understanding their capabilities and setting expectations. Despite widespread backlash from the community and the gaming industry as a whole earlier this year, the company made a good move in scaling back the time frame on their predictions that they make on the roadmap. Predictions that were almost always wrong more than a couple quarters out. While the wording wasn't great, the idea was solid and has restricted them to some extent from making bad predictions. 
This was a much needed change and a sign of the company getting a bit more realistic of what's to come, bringing players more confidence in the dev and more focus on the current game at hand rather than the game in a year. While all this was happening, CIG slowly started to introduce more and more opportunities for players to try out Star Citizen without buying it. With over 30 days of free-to-play period throughout the year, it started to become clear they believed the game could speak for itself in some capacity. And this has worked wonders for the community growth. In addition, new large YouTube channels and streamers spread the awareness of the game wide with their own gameplay and videos. It's so am I. <laughs> What happened in the next few hours surprised me in ways that I could have never imagined. The graphics are astonishing. The sense of scale, incredible. And I personally had some gameplay experiences that I've never had before. On the flip side, this game can be incredibly frustrating to play at times with bugs and unintuitive systems, especially for new players like myself. But there are flickers of brilliance in here from time to time. And after my play session had ended, I was sat longing for more. And with the reveal that there will be no gameplay keynote at CitizenCon this year, possibly the single biggest marketing opportunity for the game, it's become clear Star Citizen can now sell itself. From new missions, features, and locations all being bundled together in the same release, to the in-house rendering engine for the game finishing up, and new career opportunities finally being added for the list of things to do, it is clear that Star Citizen is progressing in a much more meaningful way to becoming an actual game. It's nowhere close to that, and the development is still pretty bumpy. Hell, this game can be downright frustrating. There are plenty of bugs, instability at times, and many computers struggle with this game. There's a lot of negative to be said about the experience, but that's not why I'm here. The trajectory of the game's development has never looked better, and the effect of that can be seen indirectly in the huge amounts of new players joining, sticking around, and inviting friends. Understanding the current state of Star Citizen and comparing that to the struggles it experienced in the past is important to see why the game is beginning to take off now. Of course, the additional quality of life improvements and improved stability is having an effect, but the secret to the game's success is also one of the more frustrating parts. The updates. See, every three months, Star Citizen receives another update to the game with a multitude of possible improvements. From new gameplay systems and career choices, to crucial background tech that's running the game engine, to a planet with a city for you to land at and call home, even to just a new weapon. Not every patch is very interesting to everybody. In fact, many updates have fallen a bit flat. But that's besides the point. Most MMOs, from what I've seen, do include updates in any range of time periods, from every week to once every 16 months. There is always content expected down the line when you jump into a new MMO, and while Star Citizen isn't an MMO just yet, it keeps up with the updates, as we've discussed throughout this video. The big difference is the contents of those updates. With Star Citizen being so deep into development and updating very integral parts of the game regularly, the team is able to focus on the things that actually make the game. Not extra content, raids, cosmetics, or new zones, but features that actually change the game in fundamental ways. For example, in July we saw the ability for AI to traverse planets introduced into the game. This may seem like a small deal, but I made a video explaining the difficulties and importance of this. That addition brought with it several new mission possibilities, new areas to explore, and the promise of every single piece of future content benefiting from that change. While this was a feature addition that you would find in other games, the fact of the matter is that it made the Star Citizen experience drastically different, and compared to other games, that experience is already quite different. There we go, I'll get you right in position. Yeah, beautiful. So when you consider taking a few friends on your spaceship out to run missions, your options from one year to the next, and from one quarter to the next even, are always changing in more ways than just a new location. And while the game is funded through ship purchases, you never need to spend more than the base game amount of $45 at the moment, and you can earn and participate in all of those ships in-game. So people may jump for those ships, but most people are judging their time to join by how the game plays. So there's a focus on building an immersive experience around these ships, and not just building the ships. You may hear some people disagree about that, but it's important to remember how many different teams are actually working on this game. 
While some couple dozen devs might always be focused on ships, the others are focused on building a feature full game that players can lose themselves in with those ships. And because the game is so unique, it is able to corner the market on this immersive space experience. And since that experience is changing so consistently, it incentivizes new players to jump in when they see what they've been waiting for. And it gets old players checking in on the game multiple times a year. Because even though there is a major update every quarter, there are also small updates in between that can sometimes bring a few extra improvements with them. In addition to this, there are multiple waves that test each update, allowing some players to start playing in the experimental version a month early and increasing the amount of time the game generates hype for each update. This also falls in line with those free fly periods I mentioned earlier. New players like yourself can now see if this game can back up the talk multiple times every year, getting an idea of the pace of progress for themselves firsthand. So Star Citizen has figured out how to fund development by essentially selling ships with a pledge to back the game, keep players coming in with an expanding and improving experience, and keep old players coming back with new meaningful content that actually makes pretty big changes. As long as the project can continue with its current forward momentum towards a viable product and manage to keep the lights on, this looks like a very promising position to be in until Star Citizen does actually become a true space MMO. But when might that be? Every secret sauce comes with a few extra calories, right? Star Citizen has its risks. The most obvious being how this update style and the level of success it's shown can lead to development as a service. You've probably heard this argument before. They're doing so well, so why would they ever release the game? Well, it is currently development as a service in some ways, and it will continue to be for a long time. The game itself will likely never stop being developed until it's dead. Much like other MMOs and games, it will receive regular content, features, and location updates for its lifetime. No Man's Sky was never completed. It still grows. Although each of those updates are free and it's really amazing what they're doing. Thank you for that, Hello Games. Many don't have a target for what makes this game released, but the official idea is that all items, reputation, and earnings will be permanent, and life will become a lot more valuable. And also permanent. That day is still years away, and there are plenty of expected features that will be introduced before that happens. But as long as the development continues towards a fully featured environment where that is true, and continues to make less and less change on the core gameplay and stability, then we're on the right track. For now, there is a delicate balance between having a game that offers that polished enough experience to hold people long term just due to pure enjoyment, and having a game that is constantly changing those core features and details so much, it's always a very interesting experience. And at some point, we'll need to start to favor the former over the latter. For most, we still aren't at that point, but I think we're getting close. Until then though, the ability to always introduce new game-shifting features while also offering such a unique space sim experience driven by those features is a clear key to Star Citizen's success as a playable game deep in development. There is a lot more to be said about this topic and discussion that I couldn't fit into this script. And I hope this did make some sense because I did have to compact it a little bit. But if you'd like to discuss it more with me, come join me on my live stream on Monday where we'll discuss this video more in depth. And if you'd like more opinion-based videos about the development and history of Star Citizen, consider becoming a Patreon member or YouTube channel member for a new exclusive video like this every month, and to support my ability to keep doing this. I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.